Okay, so put away your calculator, your pencil and paper, and let's see if you can solve this simple math problem all in your head. So what is the problem? Well, we're trying to determine which is the smallest value out of these numeric expressions. So let's go and take a look at our options. So A is three squared minus two to the third power. B is three cubed minus four squared. C is three minus two in parentheses to the fifth power. And D is four squared minus two to the fourth. Now remember the whole point to this video is for you to do this in your brain. So no materials. But uh, if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna show you how to solve this problem using mental math. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you're frustrated with math or if you really wanna understand the subject, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now just because we're using mental math here doesn't mean we have to do this problem fast. Matter of fact, uh, it really does mean that we're going to have to pause the video and think about each one of these values, right? So again, we're trying to determine the smallest value out of these four numeric expressions. So let's go and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer here is D, which is four squared minus two to the fourth. Now, if you got this right and you did not use anything other than your brain, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, um, I could have gotten this right, but I just can't do all these calculations in my brain. So uh, for those of you that think you understand the math, well, what I'm gonna encourage you to do is to pause the video right now and take out a piece of paper and a pencil, no calculators. I just wanna make sure that you understand the math in order to solve this problem. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and cover this right now. Okay, so here is the situation. We have four numeric expressions. And um, you can see each one of these expressions is dealing with some sort of power. So the first thing that we wanna do is review what a power is. So let's go ahead and take a look at three squared here real quick before I start getting into the mental math aspect of this problem. So three squared means what? Well, it means take three and multiply it by itself two times. So in a power, this little number up here is called the exponent. This big number down here is called the base. So three times three, of course, is nine. So how is this different than a two to the third power? Okay, so basically we're gonna do the same thing. So two to the third power is what? We're gonna take this number two and multiply it by itself this many times. Okay, now of course, uh, we're talking about three, not two. So uh, two to the third power is equal to two times two times two, which is eight. All right, so as long as you understand powers, well, I think that's gonna be enough for you to be able to solve this problem. Okay, so now uh, we have to kind of think about this from a mental math standpoint, all right? So you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, there's just no way I can figure out each one of these and then, you know, pick the smallest value. Well, I don't think that's the way we want to approach this. Matter of fact, what we want to do is to kind of like split this information up in little uh, kind of bite-sized pieces that our brain can handle. So for example, if I give you a phone number, and let's just say it was 201-444-3377. Now, this is not my phone number. Please don't call this number. And be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I need help on my uh, algebra homework. Well, you know, I think that would be an interesting experiment if I did put my number up there. But anyways, uh, here is a phone number. Now, do we write phone numbers this way or any other number that we have to memorize? No, we typically, what we're gonna do is put a dash, right? So 201 dash. 444-3377, okay? So this is what you're going to do. Now, why do we do this? Well, we split or we chunk up this information in little, uh, you know, uh, bite-sized pieces that our brain can handle. And the same thing here. So when you're trying to do mental math calculations, what we have to do is literally just focus, uh, you know, like on one or two numbers at a time. So you might be saying, okay, I think I understand the point, but now we need a strategy, okay? Well, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm just going to focus my brain to this first value. Okay, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm just going to figure out one number first and just kind of see where this takes me. So 3 squared minus 2 to the third. Now, again, we're using mental math. So 3 squared is what? Well, again, that means 3 times 3. So this is a 9. So in my brain, I'm like, all right, I'm going to kind of think about this for a second. This is 9. So I'm going to kind of store a 9 in my brain. Okay. Now, this is the way my uh, thinking works. Your thinking could be a little bit different. That's perfectly fine. And then I'm going to shift my focus. I'm just going to hold a 9 in kind of like my memory. And then I'm going to go over to 2 to the third power. So that means what? I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by itself three times. So 2 times 2, that's 4. 4 times 2, that's 8. Okay, so I have two numbers here. I have 9 and 8. So 9 minus 8 is what? So I think pretty much all of us can figure that out. 9 minus 8 in our brain, right? 9 minus 8 is 1. Okay, so A is 1. All right, now at this point, all I'm thinking about is that, all right, this entire thing is just A1. So what am I going to do next? Well, I think I'm just going to move on to the next uh, value, okay, that I have to kind of consider and just kind of keep this in the back of my brain that I have a one over here. So I'm not going to try to calculate all four of these all at once, okay, that is not a good strategy. All I need to de uh, determine here is if this value, B, is larger or smaller than one. So I'm just kind of going to basically play a game of comparing. So here I have three cubed minus four squared. All right, so what does three cubed mean? Well, in my brain, I'm like, all right, uh, three cubed. Uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man say take the three and multiply by itself three times. So three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. So this is a 27. All right, so you're kind of holding that in your brain. And then you're looking at this four squared. That means four times four, that's 16. Now, we don't even need to do the subtraction here. Okay, why don't we have to do this? Well, because... 27 minus 16 is going to be bigger than 1. Okay, so this is definitely not the smallest value. This 1 is smaller than this value, so I could just kind of skip this and move on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing here is C, and I have parentheses 3 minus 2 to the fifth power. Now, in order to evaluate this numerical expression, I want to make sure you understand the order of operations, which is basically this little phrase right here describes it. It's called PEMDAS. Okay? So in mathematics, when you have more than one math operation, so for example, if you have 4 plus 1, there's only one thing to do here, and the addition sign is called a mathematical operator. But if you had like 10 divided by 2 times 5, well, we need to know the correct order. Do we do division first or multiplication? Matter of fact, this is a nice little pop quiz for those of you out there that think you really understand the order of operations. What is the correct answer to this problem? A lot of you are going to get this wrong, and I'll explain this in just one second. Now, the reason why we need to understand the order of operations is because we have parentheses here. Okay, so this PEMDAS is a checklist. I'll get back to this problem here in just one second. But this is a checklist that tells us the correct order uh, to do a problem with more than one operation, and it goes from left to right. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. So if we have parentheses like we do right here, we have to do what's inside of the parentheses first. Now, E stands for exponents or powers. So this comes second. So in this particular problem, we're going to have to figure out what 3 minus 2 is, which is uh, obviously going to be 1. So this is pretty simple in terms of the math here, but I just want to make sure that everyone understands the basic order of operations. Okay, so we're going to do whatever is inside parentheses or brackets or grouping symbols. That's what this P stands for. E stands for exponents or powers next if you have these in your uh, problem. Okay, so M, D, A, and S. M stands for multiplication. D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. All right, so a lot of you are like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know the answer to this problem. The answer is going to be 1. All right, so if you answered 1, unfortunately, that is incorrect. All right, so a lot of you are like probably angry about that because you're saying, hey, uh, you have a checklist. You're going from left to right. Don't you have to do multiplication first? Well, no, that's not the way this works. It's multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so here, what do we see first from left to right? Well, I see division first. Okay, not I'm not going to do multiplication. Okay, if I did multiplication, 
uh, first. That's 2 times 5 is 10, or 10 divided by 10 is 1. Okay, but that's not what I do. I have to do the division first, which is what? Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. That is the correct answer. Now, I highlight this because as a math teacher of several decades, I can tell you right now, uh, many, many people at all levels of mathematics make errors with the order of operations. And I'm talking about people that take like Algebra 2, pre-calculus. I mean, again, you know, reviewing the fundamentals is not a bad thing. All right, so let's just review where we're at. So uh, B, we kind of threw out because this is definitely bigger than 1. So we have a 1 for A. So what do we have right here? Well, we're thinking about PEMDAS, so we have to do what's inside parentheses first. So 3 minus 2 is 1 to the fifth power. So what does that mean? Well, we're just going to take 1 and multiply it by itself 5 times. We don't even have to do the math because we know the answer is 1. Okay, so we have kind of a tie at this point. So C is 1 and A is 1. So in my brain, I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to think about this. I just know I have a 1. And now I need to look at this right here and see if it's smaller than a 1. Okay, so what do I have? Well, I have 4 squared, and in my brain, again, I'm just thinking about these numbers one at a time. So 4 squared is 4 times 4, or 16. All right, so this is a 16, so now I'm going to switch to uh, 2 to the 4th, right? So I'm putting all my mental focus on this value. So 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16, or uh, you can look at it this way. 2 times 2 is 4. This 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So I have 16 minus 16, uh, so we're subtracting the same number. So this is 0. Okay, so I have a 1 and a 0. Which uh, is smaller? Well, 0 is smaller than 1, so D wins the competition. Okay, so you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what is the whole uh, practical purpose of doing these mental math problems? Well, you know what? I don't know if there is any, uh, you know, real true mathematical purpose behind it, but it's a great way to exercise your brain, all right? You just never know when you have to, you know, do some quick mental calculations on the fly. I personally, you know, I like to look at these problems as a game, but I want to make sure that no one, you know, is not getting these problems uh uh, correct just because you don't understand the math, right? So again, if you're like, well, you know, I can figure this out. I just need a piece of paper and a pencil. That's fine. But there are going to be times where we don't have our calculator. You know, we don't have any materials and we just want to do a real quick estimation or a real quick basic calculation in our brain. And the more you practice mental math, the better off you're going to be. Now, before we wrap up this video, I want to show you this, which is an invitation to support this YouTube channel. Now, my YouTube channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting. But to really my number one purpose for doing all this, you know, doing all these videos is to encourage people to not give up on mathematics. OK, so there's no such thing as a person that's bad at math. OK, if you're saying to yourself, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just bad at math or I was really bad at math at, uh, you know, in school. Listen, that is not true. OK, now you might you know, uh, put up an argument and say, yes, yes, I'm just terrible. Listen, that's not the case. OK, what you need is crystal clear instruction. You need a you know commitment to learn um, you know, the material. But most importantly, you know, you're going to need time, all right? Like my YouTube channel, I started 14 years ago, but I didn't do anything for a long time with my channel. And then over, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight years ago, I really started putting a lot of effort in. And then, of course, everything got much better for me. But uh, math, it is no different than like my YouTube channel. In other words, if you do a little bit here, a little bit there, well, you're not going to really get that great of results. So if you truly want to learn math, you got to be committed to the subject. So if you want to learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find a link to those in the description of this video. But uh, for me to kind of get this message message out to as many people as possible, I need your support. And the best way you can uh, support this channel is to simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well, so you can get my latest videos. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.